And every night before I go to bed, my wife and I say one thing that we're grateful for about each other. That's another little love habit that if, and we talked about this in the preamble, if your business is doing really well, ask yourself why. Well, I measure everything that I do and I know the most important behaviors. All right, cool. Good morning and welcome to another episode of Better Business, Better Life. Today I am joined by Ken Palmieri, who is the CFO, the founder and host of the podcast Next Level University. And I'm going to let Kevin tell you a bit more about this, but basically it is a, a universe that's designed to help you to improve your, 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 your life, your love, your health, all the areas of your life that need improving. So welcome to the show, Kevin. Deborah, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to chat and see where we go today. Absolutely. So <laughs> tell us a little bit about what about Kevin as a person and also mm. what you're doing with that next level university and perhaps share a couple of things that you're quite proud of that you've achieved in your life as well. Yeah. Kevin as a person is just a, a man who likes adding value to people. And I think at the deepest of levels, I want to be the person that I needed. That's mm. one of the big reasons I do a lot of the things I do. And that's one of the reasons I do them in the way I do. So I think that's very, very important to me to, to stay aligned with that. Uh, what we're doing with Next Level University is, like you said, we're trying to take a holistic approach to quote unquote success and helping people redefine success to fulfillment. Mm -hmm. Fulfillment and happiness are two different things. And I think a lot of us are optimized to be happy when in reality, happiness is fleeting, but fulfillment is you being on a journey towards something greater and really endless growth. Mm -hmm. And I would say the the biggest thing that I am proud of, or the thing I'm most proud of, is the fact that every single one of our 1175 episodes has been based on how do we add as much value as humanly possible to the audience. We try not to ever take shortcuts. We just, we sit down and say, what does Deborah need to hear today? And mm -hmm. how do we add it as much value as possible? So that's something I'm very, very, very proud of. Yeah, and that's a huge number of episodes. Congratulations. Thank you so much. So you mentioned that you want to be the person that you need it. So can you explain a little bit about that? What, what, <laughs> yeah. Where did that come from? <laughs> yeah, I I remember, and I'm sure there's, there's some people that will resonate with this. Bef long before I was an entrepreneur, I always assumed I could never be an entrepreneur. I always mm -hmm. assumed I could never be a business owner. I always assumed I could never understand the numbers and the margins and all. I, I just didn't resonate or relate to the people who I saw in business. So my goal is for somebody to be able to look at me and say, oh, okay, he didn't know any of this six years ago, and now he's really, really good at it. How did he get that way? Mm -hmm. That, I, I don't ever want somebody to look at me and say, because Kevin did that, I can't. I want it to be the opposite. So yep. it's very important for me, as somebody who didn't go to college and somebody who didn't study professionally a lot of the things I do, I, I want to make sure that people can connect with that. It's very important for me to be relatable. It's it's something mm. that I am very focused on. I love it. I'm a, I can tell that from the way that you're talking. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> so you didn't go to college. Um, and, mm -hmm. and yeah, that's really funny, isn't it? Because I actually, I had a bit of an ego challenge, I think, in my early life. I felt like I had to get lots of qualifications in order to prove myself successful. So I've actually done a lot of different degrees. And, and in all honesty, I think I, I never regret anything. But if I could go back in time, probably wouldn't waste so much time doing study. Because I think I learned a whole lot more from running a business, making mm -hmm. the mistakes, um, you know, the things that you do in running a business. So what have been the biggest kind of challenges that you have come across and how have you overcome them? Yeah, it's interesting. A lot of my struggles have been like the internal, not in mm. terms of like the external staffing or that sort of thing. It's really been confidence. Yeah. It's been the, how do I actually do this? Am I good enough to do this? Am I good enough to do what's required of me to get to the next level of business? Mm -hmm. The imposter syndrome of Anytime I try something new, like, can I actually do this, right? I'm a podcaster, but now I'm a podcaster who has a business and speaks on business and speaks on leadership and speaks on relationships. So for me, I think a lot of the stuff, Deborah, was the painful, am I actually capable of doing this? Am I good enough? Am I smart enough? Can I be smart enough? That's the battle that I have daily. I still deal with that. 
Yeah. I think but we all do, right? Because there yeah. is this thing called the inner critic and, and whether we like it or not, we can never completely get rid of them. The best mm. that we can do is work with them as opposed to against them, I think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and your and your next level university, I mean, when I first spoke to you earlier on, you mentioned the sort of the key areas of the life that it's all about. Can you just repeat those for us? Because I didn't mm. quite get them written down properly and that was yeah, really yeah. yeah. Life, love, health and wealth. That's life, our love, health and wealth. Perfect. That's yeah. our, our real focus. We I was financially successful in my mid twenties. I was also in the best shape of my life, but my relationship was burning to the ground. And I think you said this earlier in the preamble, we were talking about balance and how balance isn't necessarily balanced because it's not 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%. It's more of a juggling act. I was not juggling very well in the beginning of my life. So I think to be fulfilled, you should be leveling up your health and you should be leveling up your wealth. And you should be leveling up your love if you want to have a well-rounded, fulfilled life. Yes. Yeah. No. Okay. I, I get that. I can. I can um, certainly think back to times when I have definitely had those things sort of out of kilter. And like you said, it's not like there's a there's not a perfect level. It's different for every person, right? But it's about yeah. making sure it works for you and yeah. looking at it holistically. Okay. So tell us a little bit about um, you know how do you work with people? Like what is your um, you obviously set up the Next Level University podcast to help people. Tell us what that's all about. Give us a bit more in-depth information. Yeah. So the way our business has been set up is based on impact first. So my ultimate goal and our ultimate goal when starting this was no matter what your financial set point or your self-improvement set point, there is somewhere for you in our business. Mm -hmm. So we have the podcast that's seven episodes a week. So every single day wow. there's a new episode. Are they short and, and sharp or how, how long do they go for? 30 minutes, usually 20 that's to 30. Yep. Yeah. So the, if you are somebody who is very new to self-improvement and you say, you know, I don't have a lot of money to invest. Cool. It's free every day. It's always going to be free. No sponsorships. Don't worry about it. Yep. Then we have like free courses. We have paid courses. We have coaching. We have group coaching retreats. So that's the way our business is set up. But it's really set up on how do we help people get from where they are to the next step? Not mm -hmm. everybody wants, in, at least in our community, not everybody wants to have an eight-figure business <sighs> or a seven-figure business, right? And I think a lot of people are used to being pushed well beyond what they want, mm -hmm. where for me, I just want you to get to where you want to get to because I realize for you, that's the only sustainable way. And I think we talked about this again in the preamble. It's kind of this treadmill that we're going to get pushed onto, right? Um, yeah. We people have the people almost set the expectations for us, and then we believe that is actually what we want. Mm. So, how many of us actually take the time to go? Well, really, what does my ideal life look like, yeah. and what is important to me? I mean, I I always talk to my clients in business and say, hey, look, a work life balance. It's different for every person. I know that personally, about fifty five hours a week is about the best for me. If I mm. do much more than that, I feel exhausted. If I do anything less than that, I'm twiddling my thumbs and so that's best for me um, it doesn't mean that I don't think about business on the weekends and all because I'm a, you know an entrepreneur of course I do but that's my kind of ultimate for other people it might be 15 for some people it might be 80 and none of those are right or wrong it's actually about what is right for you mm, 100% and yeah. the other thing too is okay how important is your family life mm, right yeah. we've I've worked with clients who they were very hesitant to say honestly my business is more important than my family to me it's like yeah cool. There's, I'm not going to judge you for that. That's, that's for you. <laughs> yep. And there's other people who say my, my fitness is more important to me than my business. Cool. Yep. The, the faster you understand that, the more, again, the more quote unquote successful you're going to be because maybe for you, to your point, Deborah, working 40 hours a week and making what you would make on that is the way you want to do it. And mm -hmm. you want to have a well-rounded life where you travel and you have time with family. That's great. You know, I think a lot of us start something and we have the proverbial carrot on the end of the stick on the treadmill. And we say, when I get there, everything is going to be great. And some of us get there, but we never redesign the treadmill. We don't change the carrot out for something else. And then we're always chasing, chasing, chasing. When in reality, you might be way beyond what you wanted. You just haven't checked in in a while. It's Self-awareness is such an important thing. 
Yeah, so where, where do people start? Because, you know, this is really about, I always talk about plan your life before somebody else does. And by that, I mean, you know, being really clear about what's important to you, making sure you've got those rocks, both personal and professional, in your diaries, you've got the time for them. That could be your gym, it could be whatever else that you want mm. to do. But I mean, where do you even start? Because if you've been told that you need to have an eight-figure business and this is what you need to do, you might be completely... Um, kind of constrained by other people's beliefs in terms of what you do. So where do you start? Yeah, I would suggest sitting down with a blank piece of paper and writing, just write three columns. You're going to write your core beliefs. Mm -hmm. You're going to write your core values and you're going to write your core aspirations. And you'll find very quickly. So say your core beliefs are time with family is invaluable and can never be replaced. Say that's one of your beliefs. You grew up in a, in a household where family was everything. Yep. Family was first. That's going to dictate a large piece of your life. That, and that's okay. You might have a belief that if I'm not working every second of every day, I could never maximize my potential. Okay, that's a belief that you have. Your core values, what are your values? Is self-improvement a value? Is fitness a value? Is R&R &R a value, charity? That's going to dictate how you do things in a different manner. And then the big one, the future one, the goal one is your core aspirations. Like, what do you really want? Be brave and pretend nobody's ever going to see this because nobody is. <laughs> if it was up to you and you could write down anything and everything you wanted, what would it be? Do you want to yeah. be a billionaire? Cool. Write it down. Yep. Right. And then you sit with it and say, okay, what conflicts here? I want to mm -hmm. be a billionaire, but. I want to spend 30 hours a week with my family. Are those two going to actually compute together? Yes or no. Mm -hmm. And then at least you can see where your potential, your potential blind spots are. I mean, you can't really see blind spots, but you can see where the potential kinks in your potential future are. So mm -hmm. I always suggest that because a lot of us don't know what our core values are. No. We're just running the same algorithm we've been running for our entire lives. And if you don't know what's important to you, how can you design your life based on what's important to you? Yeah. And I think it's really interesting. I was sat sharing with you. I was at a conference the other day and one of the speakers actually, there was about 130 people in the room and he asked how many people actually had a plan for their life, not for their mm. business, but for their life. And only two people put their hands up and I was obviously one of them because I'm a bit, uh, I like to plan my life. But um, some people get caught up in the how when they're trying to do these kinds of exercises. And it's like, actually, the how comes once you're clear on what you want. Is my belief. Mm -hmm. Is that what you believe? Yeah, I think that it's one of those things where I think a lot of people, they don't go in the pool until they know how to swim. Yeah. It's like, well, it doesn't, it doesn't really work that way. So you've got to get in the pool and then you figure out how to swim. Yeah, I, I, think, that's very, I think that's very accurate. But I do think for a lot of us, unless we can see the path and how to chart it, it's very hard to imagine Mm. us taking that journey. So I understand both ends. I'm definitely more a natural. I like to know how yep. okay. I've transitioned away from that just because I don't know how I'm going to do most of the things now, mm -hmm. but I'm definitely not naturally that way. I was, I'm a very certainty driven human being. Mm -hmm. So I like to know how I like to know when I like to know why, but I've, I've tried to let go of that. And I think that has been serving to your point. And I think that it's, I mean, it's not so much that you, you absolutely need to know how you're going to do it and you have to have a plan to actually do it. But I think that if you try and let that thinking uh, affect what it is you really want, that's where it can be dangerous because yeah. we can often kind of, you know, for me, for example, you know, I know that I want to take a, a significant chunk of time off to spend traveling, um, doing adventures with my husband and my dogs. And, and, you know, you can write it down and sometimes you don't actually know how it's going to happen. But if you're really clear on that's what you want, then you can work out the how to do it. And yeah. I'm not a believer in this, um, you know, I want a million dollars in my bank account. I'll write it down and it will just magically appear. <laughs> Not at all. But it's like, actually, if you genuinely did want a million dollars in a bank account, write it down. Then you can work out, you know, well, mm. how can we actually achieve that? And like you said, looking to see if there's anything that um, contradicts or doesn't quite is incongruent with each other. Yeah. It's important. Yeah. Okay. So we, we write down our core beliefs, we write down our core values, we've got our core aspirations, we do a little bit of a sanity check to make sure there's nothing that's kind of too conflicting. A little bit of prioritization, I suppose, in terms of what's really, really important. Mm. But then what? Then you take action. Then you say, okay, well, what am I currently doing in my life that is in alignment with these? It's almost like if, okay, if you look at your core values, your core beliefs and your core aspirations, and then you look at your day to day, your hour to hour, your week to week, your month to month, year to year, and those aren't in there, you're misaligned. You're 100% misaligned based yeah. on the fact that you can see the final recipe, you can see the product, but the, you don't have the ingredients in the recipe. And then from there, and this is the important part, 
you be brave and you start making changes. Mm. I do. I believe that at a, at a fairly deep level, many of us, again, myself included 100% in the past, I have lost the perspective that sometimes progress is not upward. So you might say, you know what, I'm going to take a step back here. And it seems like you're slowing down when in reality you're speeding up towards something else. So mm -hmm. yeah, you, you make sure that the ultimate product and the recipe and the ingredients are all aligned. And it's, it's a really good way for you to look at the roadmap and say, oh, I'm supposed to be taking rights here, but I'm taking lefts. No wonder why I'm not where I want to be yet. Yeah. Um, as you know, I do, I do, do you know, Wickman's work with a lot of um, businesses and help them improve their business so they can actually create that better life. And he always says that, you know, we, we as humans, we, we need to be doing that 10 year thinking that the mm. big long-term thinking, because it actually helps us to slow down in order to speed up, if you like, mm. and being yeah. really clear on where you're ultimately headed is really, really important. Yeah. It's hard. Okay. It's hard. Yeah, that, it is. Yeah. It's a challenge, but even if it's five years, like whatever you can whatever you're capable of putting out into the future. That's yep. good. Stretch as far as you can. Mm, yeah, don't, don't overstretch yourself. Okay, so redesign the treadmill. So this is part of the redesign the treadmill, right? Is actually being really clear about where we want to go, mm -hmm. um, working out the things that we need to do. What about finding time? Because, you know, one of the <laughs> biggest things that I hear is, oh, but this is all really well and good, but I'm too busy. I'm too overwhelmed. I don't have the time to do this stuff. Mm. Yeah, no, I, I understand completely. I understand 1,000%. It's not that... If you're your if you're a business owner and you're the person in charge of making the scheduling and setting up the business, at the end of the day, you just have to reprioritize. I know mm. it's easier said than done, but I think for many of us, we don't believe it will be worth it. We don't mm. believe that me making changes here is going to be worth it because it's going to affect the bottom line or it's going to affect whatever it may be. When in reality, you just haven't allowed yourself to do it yet, probably. Mm. Because you're not supposed to. You're supposed to do supposed to do X amount of hours. So yeah, it's, it's one of those things where I love mixed martial arts and mm -hmm. I love boxing and kickboxing. I can either a convince myself I don't have time or I can say, well, instead of spending three hours with my wife tonight, I'm going to spend two hours with my wife. Mm -hmm. It's, I just think of it as a bucket. I have to take one piece of food from this bucket and I need to put it in the other bucket. And that's why I consider it juggling. I, I consider it juggling. You're, there's always room for you to take one thing out. It's just, are you willing to pay the price for what that one thing is going to potentially lose? That's really mm. all it is. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, I mean, Stephen Covey back in the day, he had his whole thing about putting your rocks into your, um, mm -hmm. your calendar first, because they're the important things. And if you don't make time for them, they won't happen. Yeah. Um, it's a similar kind of concept really, isn't it? It's like at the end of the day, there is a limited capacity of that bucket you yeah. to decide what the most important things are and then fit the other things in around them. Yeah. If it's mm. maybe for you, it's every I'm going to put on the calendar every Monday night I watch football yeah. or every Saturday night, you know, my partner and I go to the movies. If you put it in there, you'll find a way to get everything else done yeah. or you're going to, you're going to realize very quickly what your essentials are and what your non-essentials are. And then you can go from there mm. that, or you can work on delegating better. I mean, that's a whole, that's a whole nother topic, but that's another <laughs> thing too. Yeah. No, that's, I like the analogy and I think it's, you know, it is important. I mean, I, I I think that by putting things in your diary and committing some time to them, it doesn't mean, because people say, oh, that's so rigid. That doesn't give me the freedom, the mm. flexibility. It absolutely does. I could be really honest. I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to learn to play the saxophone, but I obviously don't want it quite enough because I actually have a slot for twice a week for me to practice <laughs> my saxophone. And every week I kind of make the decision that, oh, no, I'm too busy. I've got other things on. Mm. So I'm not really quite committed yet to learning the saxophone, but mm. at least it's in there. And I suppose what that gives me, it gives me a choice. I can either say, actually, that half an hour is in there. I could take it right now and I could go and practice saxophone or I can choose not to so it doesn't mm -hmm. actually restrict you it's just being more structured around making sure you do have that time if you want it 100 percent. I mm. I get that a lot and I understand I for like in the beginning Deborah I did not want to do that but yeah. now I, I have a spreadsheet that has 23 habits that I do every day oh wow and those 23 habits give me the freedom it only takes me two and a half three hours to get them done if I'm really focused and productive I can get my entire day done in three hours yeah. And then theoretically I have as many hours as I want, but I do a lot of interviews and coaching calls, but still, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not restricting. It does feel that way in the beginning, but it's one mm -hmm. of those things where when you create something concrete, it allows you to move freely outside of that. So I do believe it's one of the most valuable things in the world.
Hmm. So your 23 things, has that come from doing this exercise around what is important to you and making sure you have those things to do? Yeah. So we try to break it into health, wealth, and love. So mm-hmm. under health, one is like, I track my calories every day. I weigh myself every day. I try to exercise for 30 minutes a day. Uh, under wealth is I learn for 30 minutes a day. I prospect for a potential client, you know, making sure I'm moving the business rocks. And then love is meditation is one. And fitness is kind of self-love self, for self me love, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then every night before I go to bed, my wife and I say one thing that we're grateful for about each other. That's another little love habit that if, and we talked about this in the preamble, if your business is doing really well, ask yourself why. Well, I measure everything that I do and I know the most important behaviors. All right, cool. Mm-hmm. What if you brought that into, into health? And then if you brought that into your relationship, what would your health and your relationship look like if you treated them the same as the business, the KPIs for your business, the KPIs for your life? Mm. I think that's absolutely true. Um, I know that. And, and you have to recognize, you know, some of your weaknesses as well. So, I mean, I, I have to say that I am, um, I love to eat and drink um, and I'm, I'm not so fond of going to the gym. And I know that if I just say, I'm going to go to the gym, I won't do it. So mm. I actually have to have a personal trainer that holds me accountable. That I have three sessions a week booked in with that are not negotiable. Um, and then when I do it, I always come out feeling a whole lot better, but sometimes I just go, I don't really feel like going. And then it's like, <laughs> but I've got somebody there waiting for me. Mm. And I know that's the only way that it will work for me. Um, I do enjoy cycling and walking so that stuff's easy but it's the it's the real physical weight training stuff that yeah. i'm not so fond of yeah. understandable understandable yeah. a, a great question that i've been trying to ask myself and i've been telling clients to ask is instead of saying what would i be happiest doing what would i be most fulfilled doing mm. that's a really important question for me because i don't want to go to the right. gym and yeah. do an hour of cardio but i do know i will be fulfilled after i do it based on the fact that i'm growing towards my ultimate goals yeah, that's a really good question. So we might be fulfilled. Um, what about if somebody is, you know, wanting to work on self-improvement and has all this stuff that they want to do, but maybe their partner, their husband, their wife, their partner, whatever it might be, isn't that way inclined? Mm. How, what do you think, how do you feel about that? I think there's a couple ways to go about it. One, you can either lead. So you lead by saying, hey, in the car today, uh, on, our, on the way to the grocery store, I'd like to listen to this book. Are you into that? I think you'll find that whether your partner says yes or not, it opens up the opportunity for a conversation, right? At least you can, you can have a conversation based on that. And there's layers to that. So say that your partner says, honestly, no, I'm not into that. Two ways you can go. Is there something similar to this that you might be interested in or what we call the vulnerable problem solver? If it gets to this point, all you have to do is say something along the lines of Deborah, I've been having this feeling lately and I just want to be vulnerable here and I'm scared to share this, but I'm a little bit nervous that our core value of self-improvement isn't what I originally thought it was. And then you have that conversation of, I'm a little bit afraid that this is going to create distance in our relationship. Mm -hmm. And you just have a vulnerable conversation about it. It's weird how a lot of the advice I give is like, have you talked about it yet? And people are like, no, not yet. It's like, oh, okay, that's the, that's the answer. <laughs> the answer is we need to talk about it. There's nothing you're going to subconsciously do that's going to make this aligned. Mm-hmm. So I think, I think that's one part of it. We say lead, leave, or appease. You lead by leading the way. You leave by saying, you get to the point where you say, oh, this isn't actually going to work and I can't be myself. Or you appease by saying, well, when I'm with this person, I'm going to be a different version of myself. But I think you have to lead. You have to lead the conversation, be brave, be courageous, be vulnerable, and try to lean into your truth and Mm -hmm. talk about why it's important to you, why it's important to the relationship. And it's not the fact that you want the person that you're with to change. It's the fact that you want to have things in common with that person so you can share that bond. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the, the important thing. Like we should never expect anybody to change because we want them to. The only person right. we can change is ourselves, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but we can certainly, I, I think also lead by example. I mean, I know that um, my, my husband really doesn't like going to the gym at all, but I've said to him, well, hey, look, I'm going to go three times a week. Um, and if you want to join me, then that's absolutely fine. And now all of a sudden he's coming three times a week with me. So it's sort of, you know, because <laughs> he sees it's important to me and, and he doesn't mind doing it. And then he sees what it, the effect has on me. So it's like, okay, I can do that. Yeah. And that's accountability, right? Mm. It's if I'm already in the car and I'm going to turn on an audiobook, 
the other person just has to say yes. They don't have to do any of the work. Mm. I'm already going to do it. If you're along for the ride and you're interested, I'll get us going. I'll, mm. I'll even, this is the other thing too. You can decide, okay, when it comes to, let's just say when it comes to self-improvement, I'm going to be the pilot. I'm going to make sure everything is set up. I'll make sure we have the book. I'll make sure we have the audio book, whatever it is. We have the tickets where the other person might be the co-pilot. You're leading the charge to your point, Deborah, and you're making it easier and more sustainable for them to build the habit. Hmm. Okay, that's great. Hey, um, you've given us so much stuff already, but I always do like to ask, you know, for sort of three top tips or tools that people can actually use, because I like this to be a really pragmatic, um, hey, here's something you can go away and do straight away. What would be your kind of three top tips or tools that you'd share with the listeners? Uh, number one, I would say, and again, for me, I think a lot of it is about awareness. I like, I like awareness and I like digging up awareness. Number one, I would say, ask yourself a simple question, but it's a profound question that could change your life. What, if I could do anything in the world in the service of humanity, what would that one thing be? I think that just can help you reset your goals. I think that's mm -hmm. one thing. Uh, number two, these are my gimmies. I want you to create three habits under health, three mm. habits under health. It can be drink more water. It can be move your body. It can be weigh yourself. It can be yoga. It can be exercise. And then I, I think it would be beneficial for everybody to create three love habits, mm. three things that you can do every day that involve loving yourself or loving on a partner, a family member, a friend. When it comes to the business, there's a lot of things that we're already doing and that's why we're successful. But I want everybody to be as successful at home as they are when they leave home. And I guess many of us work from home now, but you know what I mean. Yeah, no, absolutely. So if I could do anything in the world in service of others, what would it be? And allow mm. your, your mind to kind of um, process that and come up with it. Create three habits under your health. And that, as you said, that can be really simple things. It could just be yeah. um, taking your calories every day, weighing mm -hmm. in every day. Um, and then yeah. create three love habits for yourself and your partner. Actually, I love, um, we have a similar routine at home as well. So that question that you ask your partner at the end of the day. So mm -hmm. that's, you know, what's the one thing that you're uh, grateful for? Yep. No? What's one yep. thing that you're grateful for? And then, yep. And then we reciprocate. Yeah, that's fantastic. And um, we, we do that in the morning as well, just to kind of be, you know, set up the day in terms of mm. grateful for and setting up what we're excited about as well, which yeah. is fantastic. Okay. Um, what other, in terms of the, because I think, <laughs> I think for some of us who are, I'm speaking, okay, so for some of us like myself who absolutely love their work um, and who find themselves, yeah, I definitely, I, I could literally uh, do the stuff that I do day in, day out mm. and never get tired of it. It sometimes has an impact because I forget what the time is. And, you know, I get my husband calling me up kind of going, hey, Deborah, it's 7.30. Are you coming home this evening? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. I'll be home mm. soon. Sorry, I forgot about it. Um, it. It can be difficult for us to to do more in that love side of things. I'd love to hear a little bit more about what you could do to actually strengthen that part of it. Mm. Well, number one, it has to be an intentional focus. So. Mm make one thing you can do and i've been i haven't been as consistent with this as i'd like to be so i have to i have to say that because i can't yep. preach from a soapbox but <laughs> another thing that's really really good is to create an opportunity for proactivity instead of reactivity so sunday my wife and i have this check in where we'll mm -hmm. sit down and we'll put our phones away and it'll literally be what's one thing i did this week that you really liked What's one thing I did this week that you didn't really like? What's one yep. thing you want more of? One thing you want less of? You can make your own questions for this, but this is what mm -hmm. happens. You might have that one thing. Oh, every time I do this, I don't put the thing away. Or my wife doesn't put this thing here and she always leaves the closet open. And it's now I'm starting to resent that I'm starting to resent, but mm -hmm. it's not worth bringing up because I don't want to have an argument. This gives you the opportunity for proactive feedback. Every mm. single week, you can sit down and talk about what's real. Mm. You can talk about what's real. The other thing, the other important thing, and depending on if you work from home or how this is, but get very familiar with what your partner's love languages are. Get yeah. very familiar with what they value and what fills their cup, and then make that one of your habits. Imagine mm. if you had to check that box every day. I want to make sure I send a loving message to my husband. Boom. Yeah. You don't get to check the box until you do it. That's another another excellent way to make it a habit. 
Yeah. It's actually quite funny. The five love languages are really, really important. My husband has found something that's added a sixth one in. It's called mm. talking about dinosaurs. And he shared that. <laughs> and so I've realized that actually he quite like quite enjoys dinosaurs. So we've yeah. actually had some conversations around dinosaurs, which is really, really cool. But you're you're absolutely right. I think that because um, the whole the whole thing of the love languages is we tend to migrate towards the one that we are as yep. opposed to the one that your partner actually is and needs. Yep. And so it's important to understand what theirs is and, and fill up their love tank as opposed to just mm-hmm. doing what works for us, which yeah. it's great if you have the same one, not so great if you want to say slightly different parts. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's hard. That's why it's got to be a habit where it's not natural. That's the, that's the interesting thing is like me, for me, maybe having saying words of affirmation to my wife isn't natural because I don't really care about words of affirmation. <laughs> yeah. So for me, it's like, I would never think of that. But if I have it written down, like my wife gave me this yesterday, she came in with our cats and gave me this little, what I love about you today. Aww. And we try to do just cute little things throughout the week that are just friendly reminders of, Hey, I'm thinking of you. I love you. I know I've been overwhelmed. I know I've been busy, but Mm. I know this will fill your cup. So how many proactive cup fillers do you know about your partner? And I, I love the idea of taking a day, uh, a couple of hours throughout the week to actually talk about some of the little yeah. things. Because it's, it's the little things often, isn't it? We sort of forget that you know, if the, if you leave them, they become huge. But if you actually mm-hmm. deal with them when they're little, they can actually be quite quickly resolved. And those yep. little things often then build um, a much stronger relationship and communication. Mm-hmm. Yeah, proactive versus reactive. Yeah, no, that's great. Okay, so a little bit about your, your Next Level University. So you do these seven days a week, th- um, 30 minutes of a podcast. Mm-hmm. And that is covering all three of those areas right the health the wealth the love yep Yep. yeah we've Um, done episodes on sales we do episodes on self-worth versus self-belief relationships uh, you know how to make more money everything that we we consider our listeners dream chasers so Mm -hmm. they might be somebody who's earlier in their journey they don't necessarily have a business yet they're maybe they want to take the leap from corporate to a business or whatever it is so our goal is to help them in all those buckets and so where will we, the, the, I, mean, I guess you can Google it, but what, where do we find the podcast? <laughs> yeah, it's on all the podcast platforms as well yep. as YouTube. We're on, we're everywhere. We're anywhere you are, we will be there. Yep. So that's a starting point. That's kind of your free, you know, 30 minute inspiration every day. Then you said you've got some free courses as well. So tell us yep. a little bit about those. Yeah. So we have a free course on the website where we sat down and we said, okay, how do we create the most valuable paid course possible? We finished the course and we said, honestly, we don't have anything for free. Let's just give this away for free. So it's us in the studio wow. on video. There's worksheets, there's cut scenes. It's an hour and a half on the fundamentals of success and fulfillment. And yeah, that's completely free on the website. There's no, no strings attached. It's all yours. And then obviously you and the team do work with people one-on-one as well. Is that right? Yep. Yeah, we do. So I do a lot of podcast coaching and consulting and then... Mm-hmm. I also do peak performance coaching and then my business partner does a lot of peak performance coaching and he coaches right now like 25 businesses every month. Oh, that's great. Okay. So if they wanted to get hold of you personally, how would they get hold of you, Kevin? I would say the easiest way, so you don't have to go scrolling through social media. You can just send me an email. Kevin at nextleveluniverse.com is my email. I do my email, so I will see it and I will respond. Oh, that is fantastic. Hey, look, um, I, I, I'm certain that we could actually talk for ages because there's so many things that um, we have in common, I think. But it's um, it's been really kind of you, really, to share all this stuff, to share this information. Um, I do, you know, we always talk about doing what you love with people you love, making a huge difference in the world, being compensated appropriately, but having time to pursue other passions. And I mm-hmm. think that's, you, you're, you're the living embodiment of, you know, how you can actually do that because it isn't all just about business. I mean, business is obviously an important part for us, but it's important that we actually have those other things in our life working well the health the wealth the love so um thank you for sharing thank you for giving a lot of valuable information here um i shall look forward to to speaking again hopefully soon in the future well thank you so much for having me deborah it was truly wonderful thank you